Today, we're diving into one of the most thrilling economic topics out there. What happens if artificial intelligence triggers an explosion in global economic growth? We're going to break this down step by step, exploring how artificial general intelligence, AGI, could reshape the world economy, why it might just work, and what challenges lie ahead. This is a story about ideas, automation, and a future that could change everything. Buckle up and let's get started. To understand what's at stake, let's take a quick trip back in time. Before the year 1700, the global economy was practically stagnant. For 17 centuries, global output grew at a measly 0.1% per year. At that pace, it took nearly a millennium for production to double. Then, the Industrial Revolution kicked in. Spinning jennies started whirring, steam engines began chugging, and everything changed. Between 1700 and 1820, growth jumped to 0.5% a year. By the end of the 19th century, it hit 1.9%, and in the 20th century, it averaged 2.8%, meaning production doubled every 25 years. Economic growth became the norm, and it kept accelerating. Now, Silicon Valley's big brains are saying the next leap is coming. They believe artificial general intelligence, AGI, capable of outperforming humans in most desk jobs, could push annual GDP growth to 20 to 30 percent or even higher. Sounds like science fiction? Maybe. But for most of human history, the very idea of economic growth was unthinkable. So let's unpack how AGI could spark this revolution and what it means for all of us. To get the big picture, let's look at how growth worked in the past. Before the Industrial Revolution, economies grew mostly by adding more people. Bigger harvests fed more mouths. More farmers produced bigger harvests. But this didn't improve living standards. Hunger was a constant threat, and life was tough. The 18th century economist Thomas Malthus argued that population growth would always outstrip food production, dooming humanity to poverty. Then something incredible happened. People didn't just eat more. They started coming up with ideas. Those ideas, new tools, better farming techniques, innovative machines, boosted output, and eventually reduced birth rates as people got wealthier. This led to a rise in GDP per capita, meaning more wealth per person. The theory behind AGI is that it could replicate this cycle of innovation without needing more people. Picture machines generating ideas, building new technologies, and driving the economy forward at breakneck speed. Economists agree that AI has the potential to boost productivity and, in turn, GDP. The big question is, by how much? Some are skeptical. Darren Aksimoglu from MIT, for example, estimates AI will add just 1 to 2 percent to global GDP over a decade. His prediction assumes only 5 percent of tasks can be done more cheaply by AI than by humans. But that assumption is based on 2023 data, when AI was less advanced. Today, with technology evolving at lightning speed, those numbers might already be outdated. More optimistic forecasts suggest that, as AGI improves, it could automate a huge chunk of global production. If AI takes over most tasks, the only limits would be energy and infrastructure, things that can be scaled up with investment. Normally, piling on more machines without workers leads to diminishing returns. Capital sits idle. But if machines become smart enough to fully replace humans, those limits vanish. Anson Ho from Epoch A. I points out that adding age power is much faster than waiting for population growth. But here's the catch. Even fully automated production won't spark an economic explosion unless technology keeps improving. According to models by Philip Trammell from Oxford and Anton Korenek from the University of Virginia, if production is fully automated but tech stays static, the economy would settle into steady growth driven by how much output is reinvested into new machines. For true explosive growth, AI needs to take on the toughest task of all, inventing better technology. This is where things get exciting. Can AI drive breakthroughs in biotechnology, green energy, or even in AI itself? AGI enthusiasts believe these systems won't just answer questions. They'll run projects, conduct research, and generate new ideas. The AI Futures Project predicts that by the end of 2027, nearly fully automated AI labs will be conducting scientific research. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, thinks AI could start producing novel insights as early as next year. Economists studying endogenous growth theory, how technology drives progress, have long argued that if ideas spark more ideas fast enough, growth could become limitless. Capital doesn't just pile up, it becomes more effective. Progress multiplies. Humans have never crossed this threshold. 
Some even argue that ideas are getting harder to find, as researchers must master ever-growing fields to reach the cutting edge. AGI could break these barriers. In Epoch AI's model, early profits from automation are plowed back into hardware and software research. Once AI automates about a third of tasks, annual GDP growth surges past 20% and keeps climbing. Anson Ho admits the model is definitely wrong, but says it's hard to pinpoint why. Skeptics argue it overestimates incentives to invest in research since the benefits spill over to the broader economy creating a collective action problem. But AI companies tell Ho he's underestimating the feedback loops when AGI starts improving itself, potentially leading to a superintelligence far beyond human capabilities. If those feedback loops hit maximum strength, the economy could become Information produced by information capital, which produces information faster every year, as Nobel laureate William Nordhaus wrote in 2021. This leads to the singularity, a point where output becomes infinite. But the singularity is more of a counter-argument, proof that the model must eventually break down. Still, even the first step, a massive acceleration in growth, would be world-changing. What does this mean for workers? The Industrial Revolution's first growth surge wasn't kind to them. Greg Clark from the University of Southern Denmark notes that an English construction worker in 1800 earned the same real wages as one in 1230. Population growth ate up all the extra output. Over the next 50 years, workers' living standards even declined. Today, the fear is that workers become obsolete. The cost of running AGI would cap wages, as no one would hire a human if AI does the job cheaper. As tech improves, that cap would drop. If AI becomes cheap and powerful enough, people's only income would come from owning capital, becoming rentiers. Nordhaus and others show that when labor and capital become interchangeable and capital accumulates, all income flows to capital owners. Silicon Valley's advice? Better be rich when the boom hits. But it's not that simple. Economist Tyler Cowen from George Mason University argues that change will be slower than technology allows. There are many factors of production. The stronger the AI, the more the weaknesses of other factors hold you back, he says. Think energy shortages, regulatory hurdles, data limitations, or just human inertia. Even a superintelligence might run out of ideas. As Philippe Aguillon from LSE and his colleagues wrote in 2017, AI might help fishermen, but it won't change what's in the pond. If AI doesn't fully replace humans, we'll work alongside machines. Some will earn massive salaries. In Nordhaus's model, if labor and capital aren't perfectly substitutable, a growth explosion drives a wage explosion. But wages shrink as a share of the economy, as the economy grows even faster. We're already seeing this in tech firms, where top talent earns sky-high salaries, but owners take the lion's share of income. Averages hide inequality. Skyrocketing wages for superstars won't comfort those with routine desk jobs, who'll shift to sectors AI hasn't touched. If robotics lags, there'll be plenty of physical work, plumbing, coaching, you name it. These sectors, like today's labor-intensive industries, might face Bomol's cost disease, where wages rise without productivity gains. That's great for workers, but could limit economic growth. Why? When prices for something drop, people buy more, but its share of spending can shrink. In 1909, Americans spent 43% of their income on 3,400 calories of food daily. Today, they buy 3,900 calories for just 11% of their income. If prices fall faster than demand grows, the economy becomes dominated by what's hard to automate. Agion and his team note, growth may be constrained not by what we're good at, but by what's essential and hard to improve. If you believe an economic explosion is near, models suggest one thing, own capital. Its returns will skyrocket. In Silicon Valley, engineers are already saving up, bracing for a day when their labor loses value. But which assets to pick? High growth means high real interest rates. Imagine a surge in demand for data centers, energy, and infrastructure. Epoch AI estimates optimal AI investment this year at $25 trillion, 50 times OpenAI's $500 billion Stargate project. Meanwhile, the urge to save drops. If incomes are about to soar, why bother? Economist Frank Ramsey showed in the 1920s that as growth rises, real interest rates must rise to encourage saving. For assets, this creates a tug of war, as Trevor Chow and colleagues argue. Higher rates increase the discount rate, slashing the value of future earnings. But faster growth boosts those earnings. The effect on stock prices? 
unclear, they say. Cash in the bank might seem safe, but if central banks don't raise rates in time, inflation could erode savings. Land's another option. Its supply is fixed, and a superintelligence might bid up prices for solar farms or data centers. But land is sensitive to rates. Imagine refinancing a mortgage at 30%. High rates would also trouble debt-laden governments. Fast growth could ease fiscal woes, but higher rates would worsen them. Governments might owe more to bondholders, just as AI-driven job losses fuel demands for redistribution, like universal basic income, which many in Silicon Valley see as inevitable. Tyler Cowen suggests focusing on the growing pie, not how it's sliced. But countries slow to adopt AI or reliant on foreign capital could face a brutal squeeze. Markets aren't betting on explosive growth yet. Basil Halperin from Stanford notes that markets don't see it as likely. A July 15, 2025 MIT paper by Isaiah Andrews and Miriam Farboudi found bond yields drop after new AI model releases, not rise. Silicon Valley hasn't sold the world on its vision. But AI has outpaced predictions for a decade. Show DeepSeek to someone from 2015, and they'd be stunned. If forecasts of AI's economic impact are as off as those of its capabilities, we're in for a shock. Economist Robert Lucas once said the consequences of economic growth for human welfare are so profound, it's hard to think of anything else. A GI only amplifies that. So what do you think? Are we ready for an AI-driven economic boom? Will it benefit everyone or just capital owners? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll tackle more economic puzzles. If you enjoyed this story, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Please support us on Patreon, link below.